Look at those lovely curves, and I'm not talking about the ladies, I'm talking about the graphs. We don't objectify ladies here and their lovely humpy bumps. That would be sexist, okay? Good. What was that intro? I do not know, but you've got to try these things. Hello guys, how's it going? Tifty here, and today we've got a lovely little topic for you guys. We're going to be focusing on learning curves today, and we're also going to be looking a little bit at the Dunning-Kruger effect and skill ceiling. So there's a lot of stuff to cover today, but it's going to be really cool. I've got some beautiful little animations for you to try and explain my thoughts as we go along. Now I'm going to be mainly talking about TF2 and Overwatch because no one has ever compared these two games before in any way. And I wanted to say straight away that I love them both. I love them in different ways. So this isn't about slagging the games off, it's just about having a look at them and comparing some of their features. So before we go too deep, and we will be going deep, you know we like to go deep on this channel guys. I wanted to get this out of the way, so the familiar expression, a steep learning curve. We're all familiar with it, it's intended to mean that the activity is really difficult to learn, but I, wanted, I just wanted to highlight something for you. A learning curve that has a steep start, in reality, actually represents very quick, rapid learning. So you've already learned something. That's the kind of channel you're dealing with, yeah? It's throwing out knowledge. Okay, so now let's kick off with the basics for you guys. Here we have a juicy graph. On the y-axis we have the skill or learning, and on the x-axis we have time or experience. They're interchangeable. I first wanna show you two very standard curves that you might see a lot if you've looked into this. The first one is the basic S-curve. This is probably the most common one. It's got a slow start as you delve into this completely unfamiliar world with new mechanics and maps and behavior. And then you start learning quickly through the mid game, so to speak. And then at the end, you slow down your learning again as you really start to master the game you're playing. The second curve you may see a lot is this one. I think it's called a power curve, maybe? Any mathematicians in the comments, please uh, correct me on that one. But anyway, I'll tell you what it means. So here what we're getting is rapid learning at the very beginning, and that gradually easing off as you get better and better and start to master it, you start to learn less and less. So this is a really nice curve, and something that I would imagine the game industry is kind of striving to move towards. You want something to be very quick and easy to pick up, but still have a fairly high skill ceiling for those people who want to go ahead and play for hours and hours and master a game. Okay, so it's a fairly safe assumption that TF2 has a steeper or shallower, depending how you look at it, more difficult learning curve than Overwatch. Throughout this, I'm using blue for Overwatch and pink for TF2 because I don't know why. So at a guess, you might go, okay, Overwatch has a bit of a slow start, like any game, but very soon you start to learn an incredible amount. And then that shallows out towards the end of the curve as you start to become a master and learn less and less over time. It's clear that Overwatch has put a huge effort into making this a nice, easy process for beginners. They've got some great tutorials, some great game mechanics that really ease you in and kind of guide you along the way. And I always find it really interesting to imagine where you are on these curves. We'll do this throughout. So. For me, in Overwatch, I'm probably near the beginning, right? I think I've gotten over the tricky hurdle at the beginning where you just have no idea what's going on, and now I'm kind of learning really rapidly. At any moment, I can grab a new hero and just try them, and I'll just learn tons in like a few hours. I'm still relatively new to the game. Anyway, a nice little thought exercise for you guys to do. Just have a little think. Whereabouts in these curves you guys think you are? So anyway, let's move on to TF2. So like I was saying, you would expect a bit more of an unpleasant learning curve. It's something, you know, has been talked about a lot before. So you might see a slower progress at the beginning. A bit later in the game, you start to go a bit steeper. And at the end, it becomes more difficult again. But what this doesn't really show is how long it takes you to get to that skill ceiling. And also what the skill ceiling is. So before we move on to the skill ceilings of the two games, put together this graph here that shows that the Overwatch, you can get to that skill ceiling quicker than TF2. Does that make any sense? Say there's a skill, juggling, whatever it is. I think you can get to a same skill level, juggling with three balls, and go a really bad route and a really good route. One might take you 10 hours and one might take you 20 hours, but both routes take you to the same place where you can now juggle with, say, four balls. Hope you're loving my uh, juicy analogies here. But basically that's what I'm trying to convey here is that I think it's fair to say that Overwatch teaches you in a better way towards the beginning of the game. You know, I'm not telling you anything new, I just wanted to sort of explain that in a different way. Overwatch does a lot of hand-holding and rewarding. It puts you against people of a similar skill level, which is great. I think Overwatch does a great job at the beginning of the game. You could argue at the end of the game, maybe TF2 does a great job in terms of really allowing you to master those skills. But again, we'll come to that in a second. I can't help myself, okay? 
All of the graphs we've looked at so far have been lovely and smooth, right? They represent averages, but in reality, everyone has their own little journey. Everyone learns at different rates. It depends on what you're doing, how often you're playing, who you're playing against, who you're playing with, what heroes you're picking, you know, a huge list of factors. And so your personal Overwatch curve may look as something like this. You'll have bumps and jumps along the way. You may have a really difficult month where you just feel like you're getting worse and then suddenly you have a revelation and learn crap loads one weekend. It really does depend entirely on you as an individual. And I think it'd be safe to say again that the TF2 curve is probably a slightly bumpier one than the Overwatch one, represented by this beautiful pink line you're seeing here. And yes, I firmly believe that you can kind of get worse before you get better, which is kind of what this graph is suggesting here. But I just wanted to get across that it's not a nice tidy curve. And as I already said, everyone has their own little journey. Everyone learns at different speeds, but it's the average that kind of make up a game's learning curve. So one more thing before we jump into the skill ceilings, one more thing that I think is really interesting to kind of consider, and that is the Dunning-Kruger effect. Now, if you've not heard of it, I'll summarize for you guys. Basically, that is the idea that at the beginning of your experience learning something new, you basically very much overestimate how quickly you're learning and how good you are. This is something that has been observed in psychology. It's not a made up thing. Worth checking out and having a little read if you're interested. But I've put a little graph together for you guys. So now we have confidence on the y-axis, how good you think you are, and competence on the x-axis, how good you actually are. And an oversimplified, exaggerated version of the graph looks a little bit like this. So at the beginning you're like, oh my god, I'm learning really quickly. Jesus Christ, I might be a natural at this game. And you are indeed learning quickly, but you just think you're learning much quicker than you actually are. The idea is that you reach this peak and then realise, oh crap, maybe I'm not as good as I thought. Maybe for the first time you make contact with really good players or watch really good players, or you learn something that's so completely new and different to what you were doing before that it really broadens your mind and makes you kind of realise more realistically where you sit. So your confidence drops again and then starts to raise at a more reasonable level eventually, more in line with your competence. So again, I think it's a really cool exercise to kind of imagine where you are on this graph. Remember, this is a super exaggerated graph. Everyone's is gonna be different. I think definitely some people experience this more than others. I guess that comes down to experience, age, who you're playing with, other factors like that. So yeah, you may have a more shallow graph or you may not have one at all for this game in particular. You know, it does vary again, a huge amount. But I always think it's worthwhile being self-aware and going, am I suffering from this a little bit? I think I probably had a couple of peaks in my experience on TF2. I think right near the beginning, I definitely thought I was getting amazing when I was like getting a pocket med with my mate, just heavy or sticky spamming. And I was like, oh my God, we're dominating the servers. There's a chance I might be the best ever man in the world. So yeah, anyway, definitely worth having a little think where you think you might be, if anywhere, on a graph like this. Let's move on to the last part of this video, skill ceilings. So which game takes more skill? TF2 or Overwatch? Now there's a question that will cause no controversy, no conflict whatsoever. I think we can all agree, I'm joking of course. I think there's a bit more to this question than meets the eye and I'm going to very briefly break this down for you. TF2 has a reputation of having a very high skill ceiling and Overwatch probably has a reputation of having a smaller skill ceiling. But I'm going to kind of argue the case that in some respects they're kind of the same and let me kind of explain what I mean. And we're going to be looking at different types of skill within each game. So starting off with aim, I don't think you can argue with the fact that because both games have hit scan classes, they both technically have a kind of almost infinite skill ceiling. Unless you literally have bot aim and you can get the most center pixel of every single head, that is literally the skill ceiling of, say, a Widowmaker or a Sniper. Okay, so this is where it gets really interesting. Mobility. I think it's safe to say that TF2 has some ridiculously crazy, very high level mobility skill ceilings. Let's take a really simple example. Demoman's sticky jumping versus Junkrat's mine jumping. It took me about two to three minutes to learn how to mine jump with Junkrat, and I'm still learning how to sticky jump and pogo and do all the crazy things you can do as a Demoman on TF2. Again, a very simplified example, but mobility in TF2 is mad. It's just bonkers. Watch some sixes at high level. The things they could do, the skip jumping as soldier, it's amazing. Sure, you could do some cool stuff as like Farah, especially as Tracer in Overwatch, but I think it's safe to say that in this one category, TF2 has the higher skill ceiling. And I have to mention, having a high skill ceiling doesn't mean one game is better than another. There's definitely an argument both ways for it. But again, I won't go too deep into that today. Let's move on to the final skill, and that is game sense. Game sense is very broad. What I wanted to do is actually break down game sense because it encapsulates so much, right? So let's zoom into that with a beautiful little animation and take a look at three examples of game sense that by no means cover the entirety of that one phrase. But we're gonna look at positioning, coordination, and team composition. 
So positioning, I think, is something you can learn relatively quickly once you've learned all the maps and you're using a bit of common sense. Number two, coordination. Working together, moving as a team. These are all the parts I find in a game where you kind of learn them last, especially if you don't have a lot of experience with playing in a decent coordinated team. So yeah, knowing when to dive in, knowing when to all fall back, working together, communicating, that kind of thing. You could even break this down into like probably a hundred more different skills. But yeah, for the sake of argument and for this video, I'm gonna call them at a similar level for both games. But the final example I wanted to chat about today that I think is really interesting is team composition. Now you never know, this might cause people to have a little bit of a rage in the comments. I love a bit of a rage in the comments, so please do. I think there's a lot more to learn here in Overwatch than there is in TF2. Because in Sixes and Highlander, you have a team composition planned out for you, right? Whereas in Overwatch, when should you change your team composition? Who counters you? Who do you counter? What maps suit quad tank or triple tank? And what maps triple DPS? Because there's such a vast amount of heroes in Overwatch, this takes a lot longer to get your head around this. And I think there's a lot more to be learned. I'm not saying Overwatch has a higher skill ceiling. Of course I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is this question is a much bigger one than people give it credit for. In reality, they both kind of have infinite skill ceilings in some respect and both have certain elements of the game that are more difficult to learn than the other. Basically, I just wanted to get you guys thinking and if you disagree with me or any of the points I've made today, as always, I love to hear from you guys. So let me know in the comments below. Anyway, that's everything for today. As I said before, have a little look at the graphs. Have a little think where you think you sit on that journey of learning a game. Consider the Dunning-Kruger effect if you think that's something that affects you. Very difficult one to self-diagnose. And finally, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the two games and the skill ceilings. As always, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Mission ends in 60 seconds.